Hey, y'all. Welcome to a studio conversation, mini edition for Christmas. <laughs> uh, I'm joined by Carrie, our children's ministry director, pastor. You do it all. She does it all. Something like that. Yeah. Yep. Very official, though, either way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and so we're just going to talk about children's ministry, kids, really, not necessarily the ministry, and Christmas, and just some questions that have come up uh, within that. I'm not a parent, so maybe these questions aren't that that insightful, but I'm hoping, and I know you're very insightful, so either way, oh, there gosh. will be— Let's hope I am. Not, okay. You are. Hold we've up. We've done this before. <laughs> I have facts <laughs> to back up what I'm saying here. <laughs> Um, So the first question that I want to lead off with, uh, kind of a silly question. I don't actually know how to verify this question. So that's why I'm coming to you for this. Um, In regards to Jesus and in the Christmas story, how do we know that kids know that Jesus is real? Well, I I think (laughs) that's that's probably the easiest one. Kids have such a simple faith. Right, mm-hmm. they, it's not all complicated by um, a life of growing up and having doubts and, and wrestling mm-hmm. with those doubts. It's, it's still so simple when mm-hmm. they're when they're young, and so you, that's why it's like the Sunday school answer to any question. You know, well, why Jesus? Mm-hmm. Is I think you know any ch- child that's been kind of raised up in a Christian family or around church enough or around the Word enough. Mm-hmm. Um, has kind of that simple expectation that Jesus is real. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and you, you ask them, well, why is Christmas important? Because Jesus. <laughs> and, you know, and it really doesn't get very far beyond that. Right. So it's like the, the younger they are, Jesus. That's, this this that's is the it. answer. This is, I right. know it. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, I think that's kind of the beauty of that childlike faith is, mm-hmm. of course, Jesus is real. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't he be? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's very fair. I think I, I think I was thinking of it in like an anxious, I want to make sure my kids know, and yeah. at like, how do you know that they know, and that kind of stuff. That's a very good point. The childlike faith that, you know, we eventually all kind of yeah. lose well, a little yeah, bit Yeah, of as a parent, you're sharing the stories with them, mm-hmm. and they trust you. And yeah. so, you know, they are going to have that faith based on your faith. And mm-hmm. it says they get older in kind of those junior high and high school years that now it's— it, it, it becomes something they have to own. Mm-hmm. It can't just be because it's their parents' belief or their right. parents' faith anymore. So as kids, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of more of like, okay, this is what mom and dad believe, and mm-hmm. I believe it too. Yeah. And yeah. That must take some diligence in the, like, over the years of just making sure, like, okay, we're we're talking stories because it's just how we pass yeah. information and, right. and share with each other. But eventually, like both helping them kind of make it more concrete and yeah. a real idea in their minds, um, but at the same time making that risk of handing it off to them and saying, can't really do anything else. This is up to you to yeah, do something absolutely. with it. That, that, I, yeah. It's a process. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I, I think one of the best things, and I think this kind of goes into a question you were talking about asking is, mm-hmm. uh, you know, what can we do to make sure, like, the Christmas story is not just this, like, out of context, standalone. Right. Um, that's that process is, mm-hmm. is when they're young, you know, you start with, with the stories you, mm-hmm. and you start with maybe like story books mm-hmm. and, um, and, and as you grow, the aim should be, how do I move from this like toddler board book mm-hmm. about God or about Jesus or about Christmas and over time, um, process that into, you know, another book or uh, as they age progress, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. What's age appropriate? And um, so the the aim is moving them into opening Mm -hmm. up their Bible, their Mm -hmm. own Bible, and going into these Mm -hmm. stories in their own Bible so that when they are old enough to really start wrestling with this and deciding, Mm -hmm. like, what do I believe? What's my faith? And and having to take ownership of that, Mm -hmm. they know where to go. Mm -hmm. Um, They... They've had exposure to that. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that totally yeah. makes sense. Um, I So Christmas traditions. I actually, I should. I was going to ask you what your traditions are. Totally bypassed that. Um, yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll finish off on that one. I'm kind of a Christmas tradition flunky, so it'll be a short <laughs> answer. Wait, what do you mean by that? <laughs> I, we, we have traditions, but I remember being a young mom mm-hmm. and— um, 
And social media is the worst oh, for 100%. young moms who, yeah. you know, it's the greatest and it's the worst. Yeah. And um, seeing some of my my friends who are posting like the best. They, oh my goodness. Yeah, like a month and a half yeah. of activities. Like yeah. every day they're doing something <laughs> cool, you know, all leading up to Christmas and sort mm-hmm. of their Christmas countdown of activities and feeling like, you know, okay, that's what I need to be doing uh-huh. in order to make this the magical Christmas that my kids remember forever. Mm-hmm. I need to have something every day. And, you know, you mm-hmm. can imagine how well that went. Yeah. It, it, horrible. It was horrible. Mm-hmm. Everybody's stressed out. I'm stressed out. And mm-hmm. um, so I, you know, I just had to have some wisdom about it and and go what you know what do we what comes naturally for our family what do we enjoy mm. doing together and doesn't mean yeah. there's not struggle in those moments yeah. uh, but um what do we enjoy doing naturally together and do mm-hmm. those things mm-hmm. and make those our traditions and it doesn't mean we can't introduce new ones mm-hmm. you know so we've done some Advent things, you know, um, over time with the kids as they've grown up, um, which usually has to include some kind of chocolate or treat or something mm-hmm. to get them to sit through <laughs> dad reading a portion of the Bible, That's you know, something like true that. True for me still. So Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's it's the kind of the tried and true and, and yeah. that we have a ton of Christmas traditions already in just putting up a tree or, mm-hmm. you know, those kinds of things. Those are our Christmas traditions. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's our big one is yeah. we get the permit. We go out into the woods. We do the whole National Lampoon Christmas vacation thing. <laughs> and it's everything you would expect it to be. It's it's really fun. We get to go mm-hmm. out there. It's frustrating. You know, mm-hmm. we're walking on uneven ground. We're getting irritated with each other. Yeah. But eventually, that's the beauty of it is it all comes back around. And for some reason, mm-hmm. we want to keep doing it every yeah. single year. And um, it's just. That takes some know. open hands for the process yeah. as well. <laughs> Like, this is totally going to work and be super fun. Yeah. And then, oh, that fell out yeah, of space. Never but, mind. <laughs> right. Exactly. But those are the ones that um, every year we all want to go do it again. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we do enjoy it to some level. But I that's mm-hmm. really probably our main Christmas tradition okay. that um, we still do. Okay. And, well— my kids are in Colorado this year. Yeah, so, so it's going to change. It'll change. As life and, does. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing with traditions. I think traditions are great, but mm-hmm. if you get legalistic about them, nobody's totally. going to have any fun with them. Totally. We, nobody's going to enjoy them. We would do these pun fests every Christmas Eve for, I think, over 10 years. And then eventually, well, it was made by dads, 100%. Of course, <laughs> like it's a pun fest. Um, but... Over the years, like, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed doing this. And then dads got older. One of them was a pastor. So, like, doing Christmas Eve night right after all the right. services and stuff was right. super exhausting for him. Uh, and eventually just kind of petered out. Right. And that was, like, a for me, because I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed just consistency yeah. and tradition and all that stuff. That was a hard one to let go of. But it's it's true. Like, life's just going to keep changing. Yeah. And it's okay to let go of these things, and sometimes they'll come back. And, right, you know, you exactly. Just go on with the flow yeah. because ultimately, at least for me, it pushed me in a, a state of what's important. It's, yeah. We're going to be with family. We're going to be with people. Right. Gonna, and ultimately, that's what traditions serve is Absolutely. togetherness. Bringing and, you together. And keeping us focused yep. on stuff. Yeah. So one of them, and we already touched on the question a little bit, but I want to get more practical about it. Um a tradition that we do Christmas morning, read from the Bible, and my dad will be like, nice. which book am I going to read from today? And then one of us takes the baby Jesus and puts him in the manger. That's okay. like these ceramic little... Yeah, yeah. Um, Nativity set or something. Yeah. yeah. And there's... I'm watching it in my nieces and nephews now, and I can totally relate to it, of just like waiting or like not paying attention as he's reading. And, you know... Yeah. It's just not interesting. We want the gifts. We want... Pancakes with syrup. We want the whole nine yards, yeah. and then we just got to get through this part where Grandpa's going right. to read for a little while. Right. And so the question is, practically speaking, how do we not make this white noise, not make those traditions in the, the Christmas story just white noise Yeah. and a boring section of the fun yeah. morning that Christmas is? Yeah. Well, I think, I think you have the fun. Okay. I, I think you— 
yeah, you be careful not to, you know, over spiritualize mm-hmm. um, everything and make sure you're having fun. Go ahead, mm-hmm. embrace the fun. Mm-hmm. But I think really the best way that you can make sure that Christmas um, stands on its own as this, you know, incredibly special day mm-hmm. isn't at Christmas. It's not mm-hmm. necessarily on Christmas morning. I think it really has to be in the in coming into Christmas, going mm-hmm. out of Christmas, going into Easter, mm-hmm. coming out of Easter. Is you, with your kids, you just really need to be intentional and diligent about making sure you're having conversations about God with mm-hmm. them all throughout the year. Mm-hmm. Because then Christmas becomes part of the story, mm-hmm. not just the Christmas story. Right. It becomes part of the whole story. Yeah. And that's God's story mm-hmm. and, and how we fit into that and why Christmas. And then it becomes like, why is Christmas so special? Mm-hmm. Um, I... I don't know. I'm just a big advocate of make sure you're helping kids understand that that Christmas and Easter, these are big, important parts of a much bigger story. And if you're not helping them understand the much bigger part of the story um, on either side of these holidays, Mm -hmm. um, they're going to grow up with this idea that there's there's these Bible stories and then there's Christmas mm-hmm. and not making the connection between right. between those. And right. it's really important that they connect. Oh, I love it. I, I love didn't just, it. I, <laughs> uh, it, well, it also just brought into my mind and I don't know why um, making Jesus, not the uncle that shows up twice yes. a year, but yes, <laughs> involved exactly. in your, exactly. And yeah. It, and it, you know, and, and it's it's harder. Mm-hmm. It's a harder cha- oh, totally. You know, it's a bigger challenge. It's super you know? intentional. It's lots of shepherding. Right. And it's thinking every day, every week yep. of where are we heading? What are we doing? Yep. Yeah. And, and just taking those moments. For me, it was on the ride home. I would pick my kids up for school from school. And mm-hmm. for some reason, that five or ten minutes just from school to the house mm-hmm. was often an opportunity for conversation. Or, you know, if— after church on a Sunday, typically mm-hmm. parents will ask, you know, so how was Sunday school? Mm-hmm. You know, good. Did you have fun? Mm-hmm. And that's usually the question. You know, did you have fun? Yep. And, you know, go beyond that. What did you mm-hmm. learn? And a lot of times they'll be like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <Yes>. so, <laughs> you know <laughs> dig in, dig in with gold them. Yeah. yeah. Engage with the teachers yeah. at the door. You know, find mm-hmm. out what did they t- talk about today. And yeah. a lot of times the teachers are trying to offer that up. Oh, okay. oh hey. You know, we, we talked about, you know, mm-hmm. about the, the blind man and, uh, you know, and, and so pick up on those things and, and ask questions about it. And mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, that's awesome. I think that that is the best way that you can make um, Christmas stand out in your kid's mind is connecting it to the greater story. I love it. Good. And I, I don't have <laughs> Yay, kids, I, I, but I, I did agree. It. I impressed Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that that was a, a thing to pursue, but all right. <laughs> no, no that, I, that's a beautiful way to sum that up. Um, totally agree. And even for those of you who don't have kids, be doing that for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like it's so easy to get caught up in just the, okay, now we got to do this. Okay, now we got to do this. And that's yeah. yeah tied into all of this. It's not just, okay, now we got to do something. Right. Even though the holidays can be so stressful. Yeah. You know, lots of end of the the semester type stuff going on with kids, and you right. got to do all the things and whatnot. But yeah. still being intentional with yeah with the stories that are that are in our lives that we're being yeah. told because one way or another, TV will tell us a story, or we will be telling mm-hmm. the story and taking it from the Bible. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. And I think practically, if you're working on these things all throughout the year, you don't you can, the pressure's off at Christmas. The pressure's mm-hmm. off at Easter because. Your kids know the stories yeah. and they, they, they know what's going on. And mm-hmm. so, you know, you don't have to come up with big, huge, you know, impressive ways to make Christmas special. Mm-hmm. You can just enjoy Christmas with them mm-hmm. and, 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 and just reiterate like why it's so important and how it fits mm-hmm. into the big story. Mm-hmm. So, it can still be fun and special. Yeah. Do the fun <gasps> things. Oh, do okay. the fun things. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's a celebration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, I hope you appreciated that, too. I know you did. I hope uh, you did, too. <laughs> yeah. If you got any comments, please leave them below. Um, and feel free to reach out via email 
probably to me, mark at foothillcp.org with any questions, with any insight. Love to hear that. Love to communicate with you guys. Um, yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, thanks Appreciate for having me. See you guys later. <laughs>